Ed. They said the Starship experienced rapid unscheduled disassembly. What does that mean? Uh, it means that at a, an altitude of, I think, 29 kilometers above the Earth, uh, the, the structural integrity of Starship, both the combined entity of the, the booster, Super Heavy booster, and the Starship spacecraft, something went wrong. And the, the main takeaway is that there was no stage separation. The plan mm. after the three minute mark from launch was that Super Heavy booster would detach from Starship spacecraft and Starship spacecraft would continue for about an hour uh, at an altitude between 150 to 250 kilometers above the Earth. And it didn't happen. There was no separation. And what you saw in the pictures uh, was the combined Starship system falling back down to Earth, rotating in midair, and then there was an explosion. But this was a success for SpaceX, and from their point of view, this launch really exceeded expectations. I, I just have to say, next time I break something or I have an accident, I'm absolutely calling it a rapid, unscheduled disassembly, absolutely using yes. that myself. Um, <laughs> Ed, uh, um, can you get into this idea that this was still a success? Um, yeah. What did they learn? What's important here that they were able to achieve? So like in the first instance, all they wanted to do was clear the launch tower for a number of reasons. You know, Elon Musk really deliberately set the bar low here in terms of what they were trying to achieve because they've never tried to launch the super heavy booster before combined with the Starship spacecraft. The reason that clearing the tower is important is say it had exploded and not launched successfully. That could have had a really uh, in big impact on the launch pad itself, mm. caused damage, which is expensive, but it also delays further tests and we know that Musk has tweeted that the next test could be a couple of months away. Um, the reason it's a success and they got to high altitude but not to orbit is that the data generated helps with the cadence of continued testing. Think about how mm. far this has come from an idea back in 2005 to now. It's not a smooth arc when you're developing a technology for a launch system. So they will take this as being exceeding expectations and they'll find out what went wrong and hopefully next time address it. Um, you mentioned the next couple months. What do you think happens between now and then? They try again. I mean, remember, the goal here was not even to try and recover the mm -hmm. booster. So with Falcon 9, the Starship, uh, the SpaceX vessel we're most familiar with, they land the booster back down on Earth autonomously. In this case, had they reached orbit successfully, they planned to dump the booster into the Gulf of Mexico and splash Starship down off the coast of Hawaii. So that is, gives you some reality of where we are. Longer term, the idea is to reach orbit, do a sustained orbital test, and longer term, 2024 and beyond, Starship is the commissioned system from NASA to return mankind to the moon. So these are incremental steps, but they are substantive as well, because they're just part of taking Starship from a developmental system to an operational space system.